Welcome to Firearms of America. Today, as you guys can see, I have another Danair boot review. And this is Danair Vital. Now, these boots have been requested. A review on these boots have been requested for many times already on this channel. And finally, I am ready to present the review to you. So, if you're in a rush and don't have time to watch the whole review, let me give you a brief overview. Uh, great boot. Excellent comfort level. I definitely do love the comfort level of this boot uh, with the tests that I've done so far on those boots and you will learn more in detail about them later in the video. Uh, currently they are a little bit more than $150 on Amazon. Uh, definitely true to the size. I do have a few minor complaints regarding the lacing system which we will discuss in detail later. But overall I think definitely a great boot. If you're looking at them uh, get them. You're not going to be disappointed. Currently, there are three colors available. The link, the Amazon link is in the description below. Uh, so, if you have time to watch the whole review, let's get into it. As some of you already know, this review is specifically for my Ultimate Survival Boots section. Basically, if this wasn't just your average regular hiking boot or a hunting boot, as it is advertised on Amazon, but if something bad happened and you were wearing this boot or you had this boot in your house and you put it on and you had to run out of your house, walk out of your house and walk for extended periods of time till you get to safety, run on the way, uh, jump over things, climb, fight, do whatever is necessary to survive. Would this be a good boot? to survive in, in of these different situations, different terrains. Let's get into it. How we make the judgment? We make the judgment based on eight different criteria. Criteria number one is of course the comfort level. One of the most important and to test the comfort level, I do a three mile run without stopping and then a five mile walk right after the run, again, without stopping eight miles total. Uh, the total wear time of the boot is usually between seven and eight hours. Uh, so let me tell you guys, I do love the comfort level of this boot. And uh, let's get a few things out of the way. This is size 10. And let me tell you exactly the weight of one boot. Size 10, 23.6. And uh, a little bit of glare here, 23.56. All right. So 23.56. And uh, if you watched any of my previous boot reviews, I always say that whenever it comes to running in a boot, uh, anything under 20 ounce is pretty good. You can run without getting too fatigued. Whenever it comes to weights over 20 ounce, is that's where you notice a little bit of that difficulty. After a mile and a half, after two miles, you start getting fatigued. So these boots are definitely on the heavier side. Uh, not that bad because it's really just a little bit over 20 ounce, but still that a little bit of extra weight definitely makes a difference whenever it comes to longer distances, walking, or especially whenever it comes to running. Nevertheless, I do like the comfort level of this boot. And there are a few factors that contribute to the comfort level. It's the flexibility of the bottom sole. It is fairly flexible, so you still can run properly in this boot without putting too much stress on your ankles, uh, without putting too much stress on your knees. Another factor that contributes to the comfort level is the inner sole. And let me take it out. This is a standard Denaire inner sole. Nothing really crazy about it. Uh, just very, very basic Danair inner sole. Uh, it does have some decent padding, not a lot, but definitely enough to take on some impact. Now, whenever you do take out the inner sole, there isn't much happening inside of the boot. It goes straight into the hard rubber of the bottom sole. So keep that in mind. Uh, not a lot of cushioning. If you do prefer more cushioning in the inner sole. You obviously have an option to replace the inner sole to something more cushiony, obviously. Uh, but, but just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna keep this inner sole out for now. Now, another thing that contributes to the comfort level of this boot is, of course, the padding that was implemented throughout, you know, different places of your foot contacting. First of all, in the shaft. As you can see, the tongue 
is padded throughout the whole way, which is very, very nice. You, you won't find it in a lot of boots. Here, you do have that padding, which is very nice. You can wear this boot uh, even without the socks and still not gonna get any rubbing or anything like that in the shaft. Great. Your shins are nicely protected. You do have some padding here on the sides as well. And whenever it comes to the toe box, nicely it is padded from the inside on the top here or the toe box. Again, this is not something that you see in all of the boots. Uh, a lot of times boots will just go straight into this rubber textile or whatever material that is being used here on the top. In this, in this case, we have 100% leather and textile. So we got leather going on here and this is the textile. Uh, so usually it does go straight into that and of course with that comes a little bit of discomfort because you do have that hard textile that doesn't feel very good and whenever it's the case I recommend wearing some thicker socks just to give you some extra cushioning. Here however again not the case very nice and soft. So uh, overall on the comfort level I would give this boot a very solid seven and a half out of ten. Uh, I wanted to say eight but I think seven and a half is a little bit of a fair more better uh, rating uh, whenever it comes to the comfort uh, because one of the reasons because of they're on the heavier side so not not very easy to run in them uh, and of course the inner sole could have honestly i think used a little bit more of the cushioning to give you a little bit of that uh, protection from the impact especially whenever you're running again you know hunting hiking boots not a lot of people would run or understand sometimes my viewers they wonder why I am, am I even considering the running situations but again you have to think about the survival situations and in survival situations <laughs> running is definitely one of those things that might come handy save your life okay so let's move on to the criteria number two which is proofing and protection uh, these boots are waterproof the waterproofing is from Daner called Daner dry so it's not a GTX and nothing really fancy um, but it works very well as you can see the tongue is gusseted and you do have a plenty plenty of height uh, probably about this is seven inches total shaft so we do have probably about six inches of waterproofing so you step in a creek in a puddle that is that deep you do have protection from that water not getting in very nice I think that's that's great a lot of times I see boots where uh, they would have a tall shaft like this one but the tongue will be gasseted only to about four inches and it's really always always kind of surprised me but not in this case uh, let's talk about the protection now uh, you do have very good protection from the bottom sole which we will talk about later but uh, you don't really have much of the protection whenever it comes to the toe. Now you do have this 100% leather, which I have, have already mentioned. And as you can see, you do have a good amount of it covering your toe. Not very sufficient whenever it comes to impact. For example, something heavy falling on your foot. Obviously, this is not a composite toe, not a steel toe, nothing like that. Uh, but something small you definitely do have a little bit now whenever it comes to the ankles again there is some padding not too much so no heavy uh, impacts but you do have a little bit of the padding decent amount of protection and the same goes for your heel which is reinforced again with the same leather that is being on the front uh, so on the proofing and protection again I would give a very solid 7 out of 10 uh, because you do have waterproofing but you don't have much of the protection whenever it comes and honestly I think whenever it comes to boots weighing over 20 ounce I think a little bit more of the protection could have been uh, implemented here okay so down with the proofing and protection let's move to the criteria number three which is uh, design and features now here usually in this uh, criteria I talk about the lacing system and here lacing system is is a little bit uh, kind of unique in a way and uh, first you probably already noticed there are not one, not two, typical, right? Open hooks, 
pairs of open hooks. Here there are five of them. Yes, it's a lot. Uh, but, but the bottom ones, they actually do have a very nice purpose. They do have a locking mechanism. So whenever you're tightening, uh, you do have two sections to work with, right? You can set uh, whatever tension you want here on the bottom section and then it locks in place here in this hook and then you can set whatever tension you need in the shaft, which is very nice. Um, however, some people might not, might not be fans of that many open hooks. Now, whenever it comes to open hooks, it's usually, they're usually helpful whenever it comes to putting the boot on quickly and taking the boot off quickly. I did want to mention that these closed hooks here on the bottom are actually not just material, but they do have a metal piece inside of them, as you can see here in the camera. Let me bring it closer and make sure it focuses. Uh, they do have this metal ring inside of them, which is very nice. Basically what it gives you, it allows for the strings to glide very easily inside of them. Uh, I'm not big, not a big fan of thinner strings. However, in this case, they're actually pretty good because they slide freely inside of these metal, metal hardware that you get. Okay, so uh, down with the design features, quality-wise, there are over 140 reviews currently on Amazon for these boots. Overall, people do like them, four stars for these boots. The only complaints, that I've seen from people are actually regarding the lacing system and regarding the inner sole not having enough of cushioning. And I definitely do agree with that. Again, this is easily solved. And whenever it comes to the lacing system, it really is a uh, personal preference. Some of you guys might love it. Some of you, not so much. So done with the uh, criteria number three. Let's move on to the criteria number four, outsole, traction, and stability. Okay, so here, as you can see, we do have mostly flat outsole and there isn't really a lot of aggression going on. Now, whenever I do my running and walking tests, I test my boots on a variety of different surfaces, starting from tarmac, asphalt, going to the sand, wet sand, dry sand, and then uh, wet grass, dry grass, trail surface, rocky road, uh, and of course I test them on the flat surfaces like marble and tile as well. So a lot of different surfaces I test my boots on. Um, overall they perform well on most of the surfaces. They are a little bit slippery whenever it comes to the wet grass because there isn't enough of aggression. Um, I would not recommend these boots as your winter boots because again there isn't really enough of aggression unless, unless you're planning to use the spikes with these boots. Uh, but then again, even 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 if you know, even if you're getting these boots for your winter situation, there's really any insulation in there. So keep that in mind. But we will talk about the temperature a little bit later. Uh, overall, I think it's a decent outsole, more on the flat side. I do prefer a little bit more aggression for myself whenever it comes to uh, you know different terrains. I think more aggression definitely helps. Uh, they do perform very well on sandy surfaces, again, because there isn't really much of aggression and there isn't really any place on it, on the outsole, for the sand to get stuck. So, so, so keep that in mind. Uh, but overall, I think it's a definitely a pretty good outsole and gives you decent traction, pretty good stability, um, overall pretty good. So let's move on to the criteria number five, which is temperature. Now I've briefly already mentioned that, uh, but if you're planning to get these boots for a winter, right, for a colder climate, keep in mind, I do recommend getting spikes for these boots. Um, I would not recommend using them as they are on snow or ice. They will be pretty slippery because there isn't enough uh, of aggression here. Now, these boots are not insulated. They are waterproof, so they might be pretty good, but whenever it comes to colder temperatures, they're not insulated. So if you're planning to get them for winter, you might want to consider getting them in, with some good insulated socks. And uh, whenever it comes to hot temperatures, warmer climates like Florida, for example, here, uh, definitely pretty good. Enough of breezeability, uh, a little bit hotter on the, you know, I was testing them on a 95 degree day, so they're definitely pretty hot, especially considering that they're waterproof. Um, with waterproofing, you do 
sacrifice that breathability a little bit most of the times uh, but overall I think a very nice balance for the boot now criteria number six sizing very briefly these are definitely true to the size I have already mentioned that in the beginning I do get all my boots half a size bigger than my normal regular shoe size just a good recommendation that I got from a professional hiker uh, to have a little bit of extra protects you from your toe smashing into the front of the toe box. Uh, definitely helpful. And uh, criteria number seven is the balance of application. If this really was your last boot that you put on for your survival and you had to survive, you know, go walk for extended periods of time, wear this boot for a very long time, climb, fight, do whatever is necessary to survive. Would this be a good boot? I think it's actually a very, very good option. Um, I wish there was a little bit more protection implemented uh, because I think whenever you do have the amount of protection that you have in this boot, the boot should be under 20 ounce. I think this is, this is one of the rules. If you do have this much of the protection, which is not a lot, you do want the boot under 20 ounce. And whenever you do have a boot over 20 ounce, you do want to have more protection that is provided in this boot. I think the quality is the best part of this boot. Daner, they make absolutely amazing boots. And uh, this boot is built to last, really. You can, you can just tell by, you know, as soon as you take out the boot out of the, out of the box, you can feel the quality of it. And of course, all the hardware, the way it is built, uh, so if you want a boot that's gonna last you, this is definitely it right here. Um, comfort level, definitely good for me, but I think some people, you know, they, they're, they're not gonna be very happy with not enough of the cushioning in the inner sole. Again, very easy to solve, uh, just replacing an inner sole. What really is not that easy to solve is the padding that is implemented here, which you can kind of solve with the thicker socks, but but still it's not gonna be the same effect as, you know, having all of this padding already in the boot. This is definitely, def definitely a plus. And of course, the very last criterion, criterion number eight is the pricing. Like I said, this boot is currently $150 on Amazon. I think it's a definitely fair price for all of the, you know, for the quality. For the quality, for the quality that you're getting in this boot, I think it's a definitely good price from a great brand. Uh, now, in the 150 range, there is a lot of competition, however, especially whenever it comes to hiking boots. There are a lot of great boots out there in that price range. So if you are looking something, you know, specifically for hiking, look around, look around. I have a lot of other boots in that price range that I have reviewed on this channel you might find something else. Now, if you are looking specifically for a good hiking, hunting boot from Daner, uh, with some leather, with some metal hardware, and uh, you are not really planning to use it in the winter or more for, you know, fall, springtime, um, you don't really need a lot of aggression, and, and you're fine with not a lot of cushioning in the inner sole, or you're planning to replace it anyway, I think you're gonna definitely appreciate this boot. So let me know in the comments, guys, what you think about these Daner Vital boots. If you do have any requests, you can drop them in the comments below and uh, I put all of the requests in a special to-do list. And, you know, as soon as I come around the boots, if I have the opportunity, I review them first. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. This was Firearms of America and I'll see you guys in the next video.